There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome to... My, welcome back to my channel. I am jumping up and down because I'm dying to tell you about this novella that I read a couple weeks ago. Ermgard Coins novel, The Artificial Silk Girl, translated from the German with Panache by Kathy von Enkem. And this is the beginning, I hope, of a love affair between yours truly and Ermgard Coin because I love this so much. And I have spent three days thinking about what I want to say. How can I explain why I loved it so much? And I'm just going to read to you because I can't transpose any of my visceral reactions to the writing and to the character, the protagonist named Doris. Do I have some Freudian affectionate transference from a certain booktuber? Maybe, but the tr the protagonist, Doris, I loved her so much and the only way I can really share what it meant to me is to read you a few passages, introduce them, and see how it lands with you. But first, a little bit about Ermgard Coin. I first heard about her and I'm deeply grateful to Mel of Mel's Book on Adventures because she mentioned her in, I think, particularly this novel, my memory is poor, on her channel some months ago. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of Ermgard Coin. And I picked this up and read it the same day I received it in the mail. And Ermgard Coin was a German writer. She grew up in Cologne, but was born in Berlin. She tried to be an actress to turn to writing... And her debut novel, Gilgi, was published in 1931, and this was her second novel, The Artificial Silk Girl, published in 1932, so a year before Hitler came to power. Her life story is fascinating. Just briefly, uh, she was blacklisted by the Nazis, her books were destroyed, and she attempted to sue the Gestapo for loss of earnings. I love her. I want to know so much more about her. She did leave Germany in 1936. Her husband at the time was a Nazi supporter, but they left Germany and then went exile from country to country. She, I don't know if she divorced or was widowed, but she started hanging out with the writer Joseph Roth. And I think that hanging out did have a romantic or sexual component. She wrote a couple novels in exile and she actually snuck that's a Canadianism. The rest of you crazy people would say sneaked. We Canadians say snuck. She snuck back into Germany in 1940 under an assumed name because there had been some uh, reports that she had died. So she thought it was safe to go back to Germany. So she went back to Cologne and she was there for five years under an assumed name. And then after the war, she didn't ever write a whole bunch more and was largely forgotten until the new wave of feminism in the 1970s. She died in 1982. I am just deeply fascinated with her. Her protagonist here, Doris, is, I think she's, is she 18 at the beginning? I've, I've forgotten. 18 or 22 or something like that. She's very young. She's legal, but she's very young. She wants to be an actor. She wants to be a movie star. She is beautiful, and she knows how to use her beauty to try to get what she wants. And this is written in the form of diary entries. And she is coquettish, by turns introspective and ditzy, extremely observant, doesn't always understand the context. There are some just marvelous scenes of the encroachment of what's coming a year later the darkness of anti-Semitism and militarism. And she, Doris, is a little bit clueless, but she still records it with an unforgettable vivaciousness and vividness. And she's kind. I mean, she she's a little bit ruthless about how she's trying to get ahead. And there's a comic scene where she you know locks somebody in a washroom so that she can steal that actress's part in the play but she's also very kind especially to men she's cynical about men let's let's start this is a good place to start with a quote this quote is from page nine 
that six pages into the text and I knew that I was hooked and I took a photo of this page and sent it around to Eric Carl Anderson and a whole bunch of people because I was just besotted with the protagonist. I'm walking on air and I'm so excited. I just came home. I have a box of chocolates next to me. I'm eating them, but I only bite into those with the creamy filling to find out if they have nuts in them. If not, I don't like them, so I press them back together so they will look like new. And tomorrow, I'll give them to my mother and Therese. I received the box from the Conrad Veidt type. His name is Armin. Actually, I hate that name because they once used it in a magazine commercial for a laxative. And every time he got up from the table, I had to think, Armin, did you take your laxin this morning? And I had this idiotic laugh, and he would ask, Why do you laugh this silvery laugh, you sweet creature? And me? I'm laughing because I'm happy. Thank God men are far too full of themselves to think that you could be laughing at them. Yes, Doris, where have you been all my life? Something else that I loved about this novel was the frank treatment of sexuality. Again, she knows her sexual power. She uses it, but she is not defined by her beauty. There's always something more to it, but the way that she can be a little bit manipulative in a way that she's kind of laughing at the men, but she's still a little bit vulnerable to the men was absolutely delightful. I thought the writing slash translation was just astounding. So I'm going to read another longer passage that It's one sentence, and she is escorting a man that she's staying with. She's staying with this man who is blind and this man's wife. And there's no love lost between the married couple. And she is taking the the blind man, who she's somewhat attracted to, on a walking tour of Berlin, which is where she is, and describing everything she sees. The language here is virtually synesthetic is one of my very most favorite passages in the book and it's one kind of stream of consciousness sentence she is in a restaurant where russians go the ceiling is a marbled grayish green i see i see that's the blind man speaking i see i see the ceiling is a marbled grayish green i see i see those general waitresses are so pretty the music has bald spots and violins A woman wearing a yellow blouse is laughing in Russian. Men are happy without women and drunk without wishes and are hugging each other because they're full of booze and love for everything. At the back wall there's a mirror. It makes you look pale, but pretty. They have deep, dark eyes that are brown like the violin. You can be so wrong about these things. A handsome man just kissed a woman fat as a tadpole. Old men are kissing each other. The music goes one, two, one, two. There are lamps hanging from the ceiling that look like Paul's starfish collection stuck together. The music is covered with flowers like a chiffon dress which tears very easily. Let me tell you, Herr Brenner, a woman should never wear artificial silk when she's with a man. It wrinkles too quickly. And what are you going to look like after seven real kisses? Only pure silk, I say. And music. So there was one extra sentence I needed to include there. Yes. And finally, what made Doris one of my favorite characters of the year is that she was also, and I alluded to this before, she was also loving and just very endearing in the way that she made herself vulnerable, the way she wrote about herself, and the way she interacted with the other characters. I just adored Doris. The last quote is much shorter and shows maybe that side of her. And I thank you, Britta Bowler, for the pronunciation help on this German sailor song that I have to try to pronounce. She's on a date, but she's not sure what's really going on between her and this man. They're at the movies. It was very dark. He won't take my hand? I put it close to him. Why won't he take it? I breathe his hair. Where is that wandering grenade splinter? Am I in the movies or love? Das ist de Liebe der Matrosen. I would sell the fur coat if I could get paid for it in the currency of being able to touch his hair just once. So, if any or all of that strikes your fancy, touches you, you must try this book. I just adored it. Ermgard Coins, The Artificial Silk Girl. 
I can't wait to read much more by Irmgard Coin. I got a new English edition in this, uh, what is it, Penguin Modern Classics? that has a different translator, so I'm nervous, but uh, I can't wait to read everything that's available to me in English by Ermgard Coyne, and you should check out this one in particular. It's a great place to start. Thanks for watching.